So welcome to the Dream Lab. Glad you guys tuned in this month. We're getting ready to go through another dream. And we have our friend Rahel that's going to come up and share a dream for you guys. And we'll get to walk through this one together. Come on up. Yay. Um, so um, I, I actually had this dream in the morning. And I just wrote it down. So um, I saw my parents. They were just back from a vacation from some mountains and that was some 24,000 feet high. And they told me that they wanted to take me there along with them. And uh, then the scene changes and then I see that it's the vacation time for me. And then um, I was on my way to my home and, uh, and then I started seeing small houses and shops on the side of the road that was off some main road. And it was late in the evening and dark, but I took a shelter in a small house. Uh, to my surprise, I saw that there was a one feet square of, mi of miniature farm having real wheat plants. And it was day over that area. It was having sunlight over that area in that room. And then a girl was taking care of it and she said to me that the wheat produced here would be sufficient for this entire region. And I was kind of surprised. The scene changes and then I was in my family house, but it was not my real family house. I felt that my cousins were there and I was quite excited. Um, I had two weeks of vacation and then I was told to be ready because my parents were about to come and pick me up to go to that mountain which was 24,000 feet high for a vacation. But I really wanted to be with my friends and my cousins um, but then no one was ready to come along with me. Mm. Then someone told me that my parents were waiting in a three-wheeler public transport outside and when I came out of the room, I was kind of thinking to myself that out of two weeks of vacation, my five days will be gone with two days traveling up and down and two and a half days on the mountains. As I came towards the vehicle, it looked like a small car. I saw that my parents were sitting on the back seat and I thought since there isn't much space, I'll sit on the seat next to the driver. But my parents insisted that there was enough place to sit behind. And as I peeped inside the car, I could see beautiful white tufted sofas in the car. And inside the car, it was all lit up. It was all enlarged as the size of a big room. So I came and sat with my parents. And then I also saw a few people joining and as we were on the way to the mountains, I heard people saying that most people lose their rings on the top of the mountains. And when I realized it, uh, I actually had this kind of ring uh, on my finger and it, it had lots of precious stone. And I told to myself that I'll be careful and I will not lose that ring. The last bit. We were at the foot of the mountain and there was a small place to eat just to take rest for that night and I saw food being cooked there and it was a small room and to my surprise they said that this food will suffice almost 30,000 people per day who came to visit the mountain and I was sitting on one of the benches, there were two benches and uh, uh, I saw that, that there was a bench and a number of round nacho in the size of extra large pizza was, ro was, ro was roasted in a huge oven. And it was done by a man who had plenty of dough and he was rolling it out. And when the nachos was fully cooked, he used a rod to take it out and put it on the other side. But the interesting thing was the rod never Touch the nachos, and I got up. Okay, so let's let's see if we can remember this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
So it starts out, your, your parents were, had gone up onto this mountain. It was 24,000 foot tall, and they were really excited because it was so good, and they told you that they wanted to take you there. And the next scene, you're traveling to meet up with your parents because you're having vacation time, and you're seeing, you're, it's not necessarily a main road, but more of a side road, and you're seeing all these little places off to the side of the road, and one of them is a house that you're now in that is open to all the light, and they are growing wheat in this house, and they're explaining to you how the wheat is enough wheat to supply this whole region with food, and you're thinking, that doesn't even make sense. It doesn't look like very much, but wow, okay. And then the scene changes in your, in your family home. And in your family home, your cousins are there. You're really excited to see your family. You're excited to be with them. You know that your parents are coming to pick you up to take you on this vacation. And you're realizing you only have two weeks and you want to spend time with your family. And then you're thinking about the fact that it's going to take two and a half days to drive to this mountain and two and a half days to drive back. You're not even going to have very much time on the mountain. And then someone mentions that your parents are outside in the vehicle waiting for you. And so you go outside to where this vehicle is and it's this little three wheeled vehicle, the driver in the front and the seat in the Driving back. A car. And it looks, yeah, and then it kind of looks like this bigger car. But as you're looking at it, you're thinking there's not a lot of room in the back. I should sit up with the driver. And your parents say, no, no, there's plenty of room. And then you look inside of the car and you see these huge white couches. And this thing is, it's like a big vehicle. And you're like, there's plenty of space. And so you get into the car and you begin to move towards this mountain. And as you're moving towards the mountain, you're hearing people talk about this mountain. And somebody says, a lot of people lose their rings on this mountain. And you have your ring that's on your finger. And you're thinking, I'm going to be very, very careful so that I don't lose my ring on this mountain. And you're traveling up to this mountain, 24,000 feet tall and no I just reached the foot of the mountain right and uh, so that next day we can go up but we were just taking rest and was trying to have some food trying to have some food again okay, and then that's where you are in this in this shop and they're talking about how they have they, they provide enough food that feeds 30,000 people every single day and you're thinking again this doesn't make sense that's so much more than what you would think for this little thing and you see this guy that's working with these pizzas and he's got all these dough and he's rolling it out making these these big pizzas and he's cooking it in the oven um, but when he moves it off to the rack to cool he, he picks it up but he doesn't actually touch it with the rod that he's using to pick it up, but it moves however he's doing that. I could see it move, but I had no clue, like, you know, uh, I was not able to see the rods touching those things and lifting. I could just see his hand movements with the rod. Okay. And it was just moving. And it just moved? Yes. And then that was the end of the dream? Yes. Okay. Wow. Good Yay, job. thank you. <laughs> Yay. Wow. Okay. Fun dream. Keep it simple. <laughs> You're like, oh, that'll... Because I'm not going to remember all the details anyways. Make sure you get the, the main points. So what you're going to do is sit down, find your... What's, what are you going to title this one? All kinds of titles you come up with. What's your focus? Who or what's your focus? What are your sub-focuses? What are your details? Write that all out, out and then come up with an interpretation and when you're ready, start the video again. Go ahead and pause your video now, but when you're ready, start the video again and see what we came up with here in the lab. All right, okay, so. Welcome back to the Dream Lab. We're getting ready to diagram this dream. I hope you've had some fun and your page probably looks very confusing with a bunch of bubbles, but we'll, we'll try to clarify that as we go through. What did you guys come up with as a title for this one? Journey to the Mountain. Journey to the Mountain. Okay. Journey to the mountain. 
Who or what's our focus? Yeah. Dreamer. Glory. <laughs> I know. I felt him. <laughs> what are our sub focuses? And let's start in the order of the dream. Let's kind of walk through. So, first part of the dream parents. Parents. Very important. And what happens with the parents? Back from vacation. So, I'm going to put 24K. You know, and I never thought of this. How many places, like 24K, does that actually equate outside of the United States? Does that mean something in India? 24K, would that be a way you would say 24,000? Yeah, 24K usually means 24 characters. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Amen. 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 Amen.
So, and that was during the car, she hears the ring. And I'm going to put the question mark to remind us that that was, she hears people lose their rings up on this mountain. Oh, I'm going to be very careful not to lose my ring. Okay. Everybody good? <laughs> now, this is literally a pizza dream. Yes. That's not a dream. Okay. All right. So let, let's start out with getting a couple of your interpretations. So I know we've got somebody that's excited to jump up here and give their interpretation. Yay. That's the, that's the right shirt for this. Yes. Be brave. Be brave, guys. Be brave. Oh, okay. um, this by no means covers everything because this is a very complex, <laughs> detailed dream. Beautiful dream. Um, what we decided this dream is about the position of authority that you've been invited into in the courts of heaven or the high places and the access that you've been given to supernatural provision. As you pursue rest and adventure in the Lord and continue in relationship with spiritual mothers and fathers, you will find that he has made a spacious place for you and there is always more than enough. Mm -hmm. You also have the wisdom to guard the authority you've been given mm -hmm. and not forfeit your spiritual position as many others have done on their way up to the high places. Wow. That's good. <laughs> <laughs> All right, that's a wrap. <laughs> wow. I mean, that, 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 hits, that hits everything. And maybe, maybe the question mark here of her heart's with her family, even though she knows she's called to move on. Mm -hmm. All right. Anybody else have another way of saying that, another perspective on it? All right, we've got a couple of them. So Alan and then Melanie will come up next. Amen. Yay. Well, I, I love that interpretation that we just heard. Um, so this is just a, a little different way of saying the same thing. But uh, this dream, um, Rahel, actually tells me a lot about you. You have, uh, I believe, a spiritual heritage. Uh, I, I don't know your spiritual background, but I can, I can tell by the dream that you really have a spiritual heritage and you're probably a very spiritual person. And this is an invitation to you to come up to a higher place of spiritual authority and leadership. And there are a couple of, um, couple of details in the dream that are significant. Um, uh, for example, the, the, um, the family, your cousins were not ready to go with you. And so you may have to be faced with, you may be faced with a decision to actually move on uh, to, this, to achieve this uh, the spiritual invitation to answer the spiritual invitation, even though your family is not ready to go with you, that may be a decision that you have to make. And also, um, there's a caution in the dream. Um, many other people have lost their rings. They have given up on their commitments as they've gone up the mountain. And so there's a caution to you, and you, you feel the urgency to hold on to your ring and to, to make sure that you stay true to your commitment. Mm -hmm. And so I... I I would just encourage you to pursue this invitation, this high invitation to go to go up higher. That's great. That's great. Hey, you see how even as he was saying that, he was he was trying very carefully to use language that was not exactly Christianese. Um, and when you get a dream like this, it's it's so hard. And so, you know, like if you were if you were on the streets, I mean, you get a dream like this, you're going to know a bunch already, <laughs> but you, you never want to assume. And so a great question to ask, and, and, you know, I've done this, like when I was up in Haunted Happenings, I, I'd ask this a lot, people that have a calling dream like this, and I just say, hey, got a question, what, what's, your, what's your spiritual background? Like, you know, what was spirituality like for you growing up? And usually, because that's very different than if, you know, in that type of setting, you say, you know, well, what does spirituality mean to you right now? That's going to say one thing versus yeah. what's your spiritual background. Mm -hmm. And so they'll usually go into, well, I used to, but now. Mm -hmm. yeah. They will add the but now. But you, because a lot of times there's a heritage, especially with a dream like this, that has got all the generational yeah. stuff yeah. that's going on in that, that, that is tied to it. 
um, it, you know, you, you have some you have some good clues, but that was a great way of doing that without using that language. Yeah, great, Melanie, come on up. Come on down. <laughs> um, I wanted to add some um, details uh, that we were talking about in our group. One of the things, um, obviously, the 24 came out and that that is God's dwelling place, that that's God's mountain, the gold and all of that. But one of the things that stuck out, stuck out to us was that this was vacation. It wasn't work. So it was a place of rest. Yeah, and that her good. two weeks were coming up and she only had five designated days. So she was due her rest. So it's time to rest. Mm -hmm. And that then with the ring that went, okay, and then with the family, that could be the church family or it could be her, her real family. But there's a difference between, she said, friends and cousins. Friends you pick, cousins you're kind of stuck with. And or, <laughs> yeah, they were picked for you. You know, you didn't get a choice in that. But none of them were ready to go, only she was ready to go. Yeah. So who you're surrounded with, whether you invited them into your life or whether they're there before you got to decide, they're part of you know, your, your surroundings, no one was ready and you still had to make the decision that you're gonna go. And then with the ring, um, we thought it was very significant that um, what the ring represents and that she had a warning that a lot of people lose their ring at the top of the mountain. So when they go, when people go there to rest in that high place that belongs to the Lord, uh, they, people might have a tendency to lose their covenant or lose their promise. Mm -hmm. So she made a declaration that she felt very good about mm -hmm. saying, that's not going to happen to me. Yeah. And then if I'm remembering correctly, then after that, she looked down and she saw uh, gemstones in the ring. Mm -hmm. And so... <clears throat> It's like the further of the uh, furthering of the promise, yeah. more was revealed. So like going generally speaking, um, you're being called to a higher place and it's gonna be rest, it's not gonna be work. And um, all along the way, you're gonna get to see that what you thought was small becomes huge and accommodates many. And you're gonna get to experience that and that's actually your training ground. So that by the time you get to the top of the mountain to rest, you're ready for that and you'll not lose any of your promises. Yeah, that's good. That's good. Wow. Yeah, and there's so many great things that we could pull out on a dream like this. One of the things to recognize is a journey dream. So there, there are a lot of times where you'll run into dreams where the dream is a journey. And on the dream, the dreamer is actually going through. They're traveling from this place to the next. And different things happen along that journey. Most of the time, that's a timeline. So it's talking about different parts of the journey. And the question that, that always comes up is, where is the dreamer at now? And that, that's the question. There's nothing in this dream that says exactly where they're at. Um, it, it's left with part of the journey still yet to be fulfilled, but the expectation that, that they're going there. And so you, you have the, the first part of you know, spiritual leaders or spiritual parents or people that, that have looked up to that have had encounters that have gone into the high places with the Lord. You have the second part where recognizing that, that people that are involved in the harvest have been doing a lot more than what would seem to be allowed, that would seem to be normal, that they're able to do a lot more wheat talking about harvest. So that's that was an, a ministry that was involved in evangelism that was probably small, but was affecting a, a lot of people, was affecting a whole region, yeah. and that was going on. Then there was a season where, where there had to be a choice to choose family or choose to go further in what God was calling, and the choice had to be made and to move into this new thing. And what it's done is, is you know, at first she thought that there wasn't, there wasn't a lot of space for her on this journey, but the recognition that there's a lot more space, there's a lot more favor than what she realizes or what she knows, and that she's going to be taken to this, and in the process, she's going to learn about the things that other people have had to go through that hurt them, that, that cause difficulties, so that she doesn't fall into the same traps and have that happen again. And then again, another ministry where it looks small, 
but it's huge. I mean, 30,000 people and 30,000, you got pizza that's going to feed 30,000 people. That, that 30,000, there's something important about that. Oftentimes, you'll find 30 is representing the beginning of ministry. Right, Jesus was 30 when when he stepped into ministry, and I can't remember the, I think was it David that was 30 when he first became king at Hebron. Um, so you you have these you, you have a couple different things, but 30 will often represent this thing, but it's very different than than harvest. This is something that's prepared, right? That's being given to other people, but it's given it's being given in a way that's supernatural, that's beyond just the the capacity. I mean, she sees the hand and she knows that there's a pull, but she's not seeing anything actually touching the food, but it's being put where it needs to be, so that it's ready. And so there's that, that supernatural element of what she's recognizing. And the next part of the journey is, is beginning to climb this mountain towards a whole nother level of authority. So that's a lot of fun. Yay. So, and one more piece, three wheel versus four wheel. Right, got, now I got a question. Um, is, is rickshaw? Is yes. it? That's the three wheels. So it was a rickshaw that turned into a car. Yes. So what, what you thought was going to be local to your heritage and how you grew up, because they grew up in India and they've moved over to the States in the last two years, two years. three years. Yeah. yeah. So that background gives you a little bit of understanding that they, they thought it was going to look a little bit more local to what they were used to, but it's actually much bigger and uh, has more room than what they thought. And so going from the three wheel, the rickshaw to the car, which would be a more Western type transportation, uh, what they've been brought into looks a little bit different than what they initially thought, but it's got a lot more room to take them where they're going. So, yeah. For that three wheel, the Trinity is gonna empower their life and ministry. The Trinity will empower, except for it's once they actually get moving, it's four wheels instead of right. three. Right, so that's what I'm saying. The four wheels is, represents life and ministry. The okay. The three wheel represents Trinity. Then that empowering, uh, it becomes, you know, her life and her ministry. In other words, I just thought the Trinity to me represented Trinity. The Trinity, okay. It empowering life and ministry. Yeah. And ministry. Okay. Um, yeah, so can we get our comments, questions? Come on up. Oh. I'm going to let you get on the camera. That way you guys can hear what we're saying. So my question is, um, you said this is a journey dream. Yeah. Um, if you were talking to the dreamer, are, are you telling her that some of this has already happened and there's more to come, or is this all future? That's basically my question. Yeah, and that's a really good question. Now, I know enough about their situation and their history mm -hmm. that I can place them. They're probably right about here. Okay. Um, maybe here, but I don't want to say that very clearly because I don't have clear revelation on that. I know that from knowledge and I can look at the pattern of their life and I can see, so I, I can see this. So just from the dream itself, the, the only clue that you have is the fact that the journey was left before it ended. Right. And so generally that means that they're, they're right at the end and they're ready to go to whatever didn't get finished. So that this is what's happened, and this is where they're going. Okay. Um, so sometimes it's happened, sometimes it's happening. Okay. Right? I can give a clue to that. Some, some so you've got to come up if you're going to give a clue to that. <laughs> the husband is now going to speak into this situation and clarify some things for us. <laughs> so. I didn't do very well at home, but... <laughs> well, um, the, you know, the, the wheat farm uh, and the whole region, um, you know, knowing my in-laws, they actually, you know, the actual parents, they have a small congregation that gathers in their home. Mm -hmm. uh, it has been for quite a while, and they've actually helped another ministry you know, before in the past, but that, that small congregation of, you know, the wheat farm, uh, the small congregation of harvest, why I say that is because all the people that come to their home for that Sunday afternoon prayer service, if you may call, call it that, they're all Hindus. They're not from any Christian background. They are all people who have actually come from a non-believing background who come there because they, you know, 
there, and there are signs and wonders. They get delivered of demons or they get healed and that's the reason why they keep coming back. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, they're fed the word of God and mm -hmm. that's the small congregation. So that definitely, that part is fulfilled. Yeah. Yeah. That's great. Awesome. Good. Yeah. That's so good. Yeah, come on up, Gail. So I'm the first so far. All of the people who get stuck in the details. Yes. <laughs> so um, I was wondering, because she said rod, and I immediately went into Christianese, um, and then you said pole. And I was like, uh -huh. well, I should, have, I should have asked her, because she said rod, and the rod didn't touch the pizza. But the, you know, and so when I heard that, I thought, I thought the rod was significant. And could it, could it be? Because when I heard rod, I thought, well, that's the Lord making food. And he's serving the people. That was my assumption. But when I thought rod, I was wondering if it was somehow like, don't be afraid of correction. Don't don't be like in the higher places at the base of the mountain, where you're going to a place where things have happened to people. They've lost their rings. Da 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 da. da that whole thing. That it it might be it. It's almost like the whole thing was training. Mm -hmm. The whole thing is things are not what they seem, opening her perspective, changing her perspective during the entire journey. And then when you get to the end, like the, the kind of the beginning, which is the base <laughs> of the mountain, which is a pizzas. But because he was feeding the people using the rod. Is that yeah. significant? It, it can be. It can be. Um, and one of the things, I mean, again, you're, you're learning a lot of lessons by looking at different things. And so in, in how you say that, um, you would want to say, it, let, let's say if you've gone in that direction, you wouldn't say you've experienced the rod, you've been taught through correction. But it's just say, you know, but if the rod would represent correction in that, um, then you'd say that you, you've recognized how God has, has given people sustenance through correction and through... Yeah, it seemed like a very healthy, a very, like, vibrant, alive thing. Right. It wasn't something to be, like, shying away from. Yeah. But one of the things you, you might want to do is, is you know, I, I would almost clarify, because the rod that would be correction is a very specific rod, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. it's, it's your shepherd's rod. Mm -hmm. That's the only one that actually represents mm -hmm. correction. Mm -hmm. Right, yeah. Um, so, you know, what... Was that rod? I mean, was are, is that just a word that you're using to describe yeah. what he was using? Did that look like the normal thing, or was it an odd thing That's that what, he was using? When you said pull, I'm like, oh, I should have asked her. Because right. it just depends on how you, you heard it. But, yeah, okay, right. so that was my only thing. I yeah. do get in the details a bit. So. Well, and, and, and that that's an important piece, because getting into the details, so when you take, like, a word play like that, it, it might be helpful just to ask the dreamer. So, got a question. You, you called that a rod. Like... Tell me a little bit about that. Is, is that a rod? Was it, did it look specific or did you just know about it? But then she was, did you say that you didn't actually see it? You just knew he was moving it. You could see his hand, mm -hmm. but you saw the pizzas moving. I saw uh, the rod. It was like long, but not long enough to touch. Okay. It, and like, you know, it had... Uh, kind of like what you would see at a brick like oven pizza. Pork. Yes. Okay. Okay. So not a thing. And the other thing she said that was kind of interesting, she's like, there was a lot of dough. And I was like, nah, that's funny. You know, because <laughs> that's I, but good. I, I didn't know if it was a, like if that translated across. A play on across, words. Yeah. You know, so I, I didn't know right. if that would translate into a different language. Because yeah. it's our slang. And right. so, I, you know, but I just thought it was kind of funny. You know? Yeah. So, okay. Thank no, you. that's good. That's good. Well, and that raises a great question because... When you go cross-culturally, you've got a lot of different things that play into it. So, you know, here, I mean, we use dough as slang for money. Mm -hmm. And so there's a lot of dough. Oh, there's a lot of provision. Um, so you, you, you would want to, in a dream like this, where the dough is being used in a particular purpose, and you're seeing the, the, the pizza, the pies that's actually been prepared and are cooked and are, and are done being prepared, you probably are not going to put as much import on the word dough. <laughs> just simply because of how it's being now. If it was just dough that was sitting there and you weren't seeing that full process, then you might. It was more about something that's, that, that there's, there's plenty for more to be prepared 
There's some that's in the process of being prepared. There's some that's already prepared and is ready to be released, ready to be delivered. And it's happening in a very supernatural way. Yeah. So again, you, you let the, sometimes the dream will give you some clues that help you to, to the dream will interpret itself. Um, when it doesn't have that, and then you're, you're asking Holy Spirit, now does that fit? Great idea. Okay, how does that? Yeah, that, I feel something on that. Then, then you go for it. And that, that's how you figure it out. But if there's something in the dream that, okay, so, yeah, that, that kind of makes sense here. But when you follow this through, I mean, he's kneading out the dough. He's making it into these pies. Um, how does that fit? Does that symbolism still fit everything else that's happening to that thing in the dream? Because if it doesn't, if you have to kind of change the dream to keep that symbolism, then you know that's not the right symbolism. Mm -hmm. So that, I mean, it kind of could be either way. Is it about dough that's being prepared that's going to feed other people, finances that's going to provide other people, or is it just that the, the fact that it's a foundation? I, I went with the idea that it was the foundation of what's being prepared in the process. So what a fun dream. I know that was a long one. Thankfully, you guys have a video. You could stop it and listen and write down all of your details. It's a lot easier than when you're listening to it live. But hey, bless you guys. Thanks for joining the lab. And we will see you next month with another dream.